other episodes of Moment of Truth, we've been presenting conclusive scientific proof that the Earth's geology is thousands, not billions of years old. Of course, philosophical materialists will persist in questioning the science, so let's appeal to a higher authority, the Moon. There are well over a hundred moons orbiting the planets of our solar system, perhaps up to 200 depending on how we qualify them. They vary widely with attributes such as magnetic field, volcanic activity, cratering, surface roughness or smoothness, colors, size, density, markings, and so on. All over the board, every moon seems to be very different from the others, making a feasible theory explaining them very elusive. But our moon seems to be designed very precisely for us here on Earth. The moon stabilizes the Earth's tilt, protects us from asteroids, gives us brilliant light due to its reflective properties, and it has always served to define a month for us. But most importantly, life as we know it could not exist on the Earth without a moon, finely tuned in terms of mass, orbit, and distance from the Earth. This is because the moon both causes and regulates the Earth's tides. It's the ebb and flow of the tides that filters and oxygenates the tidal regions of our oceans, making them the foundation of Earth's food chain. If the moon were slightly further away, the tides would be inadequate to accomplish this, but just slightly closer and the tides would overwhelm and erode away the continents. But we have some startling science that has been coming in since the Apollo moon missions. Several of the Apollo teams placed reflectors on the moon's surface to allow for very precise distance measurements between moon and earth using lasers carefully pointed at these LLR reflectors. LLR stands for Lunar Laser Ranging and is one Apollo experiment that continues today. Over the years, Years, it's been confirmed that the moon is on a trajectory that takes it about an inch and a half further away from the Earth each year. This lunar recession is caused by something called tidal friction and is due to the release of energy to the moon's orbit as the oceans give way slightly in the form of tides. This phenomenon actually slows the rotation of the Earth very slightly while widening the orbit of the moon. Now it's important to understand the way the math works. The recession rate of one and a half inches per year is decelerating, so the rate is getting smaller, not larger, which means that the moon was moving away faster in the past than it is now. The moon's distance would make very little difference over a few thousand years, but remember that evolutionists think the Earth is four and a half billion years old. They say evolution required three and a half billion of those years. Yet, the math applied to the moon over such deep time tells a different story, a very different story. What happens if we try to rewind time less than half that amount? Based on the moon's trajectory, 1.3 billion years ago, the moon would have been touching the Earth. But there's more to this insanity. The distance of the moon has a major effect on our ocean tides, rather than being a linear mathematical relationship. The tide force changes with the inverse of the distance cubed. In other words, a small change in distance makes a huge change in tides. So based on the moon's observable trajectory, just a few million years ago, the twice-a-day tides would have been enormously high. We don't have to go back in time very far to have tides that erode all continents flat. So lunar laser ranging becomes irrefutable observable science that proves that billions and even millions of years are impossible. To say that evolutionists are confused by the LLR data would be an understatement. Some evolutionists have searched for answers by examining the geologic record in an effort to disprove that such tides ever existed. But this is circular reasoning. The geologic record is exactly what we are testing, assuming one's conclusion is a logical fallacy. One other rescuing device employed by evolutionists is to fiddle with tidal friction in the past by trying different hypothetical arrangements of the continents in the distant past. The problem is that even when they invoke their wished-for rearranged continents, the most they can accomplish is to merely slide the problem out a bit further, rather than actually buying themselves anywhere near enough time for evolution to be possible. Evolution is impossible for many reasons, but it only takes one.